This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design app icons using Inkscape. And when we're designing app icons there's two operating systems we have to keep in mind. We have the Android operating system and the Apple iOS operating system. And each operating system has specific guidelines that have to be followed when designing icons for them. And I'll be going over that in this video. When it comes to Android the guidelines are pretty simple in, in, in that the icon can be pretty much any shape you want it to be. It could be a square or a rounded square or a circle or it could even be a star shape. So with Android you could make your icons whatever shape they want. When it comes to Apple though, Apple wants all of their app icons to be the same size, well to be the same shape actually. They want it to have rounded corners like you see here. But when we send, when we upload our app icon files to Apple, we don't actually send them to them with rounded corners. We send it to them with uh, square corners like this and then they apply a mask over the app icon like this right here that makes it have rounded corners. So when we're designing app icons for Apple we're gonna have to make sure we know where that mask is gonna be applied. We're gonna have to be able to account for that mask in the design to make sure we don't put important elements of the design outside of where that mask gets applied. And it's also good to understand where that mask gets applied in case you wanna get creative with your designs like something like this here. This is a pretty cool app icon design. Um, if you wanna use something like this for the Apple uh, operating system, you're gonna to have to know where uh, the mask gets applied because this would have to originally be designed as a square with squared corners. So that'll be one thing to keep in mind. And in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can, uh, a, a simple little trick for putting together the Apple icon um, mask with Inkscape. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So what we're going to do now is set up our document. We'll go to File, Document Properties, and let me grab that menu. We want to change the display units to PX for pixels. And I'm just going to turn off the page border for now, and then we can close out of that. We'll go to View, make sure you have Custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at 1 to 1. And then we'll open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button over here. We'll want Last Selected chosen from this drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to design uh, a simple little design for an app icon like you see here. And we're designing app icons, we want the dimensions to be the same. So if it's like 200 pixels wide, 200 pixels high as well. So. Let's go ahead and create a perfect symmetrical square. We'll grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool, and I'm just gonna hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And I'll convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path, and I'm gonna make this a, uh, a, a, a green shade with a gradient like that. So I'll come down here to the color picker and I'm gonna choose a shade of green, maybe something like that. And I'll come up here to the Fill tab, and I'll click on this button over here that says Linear Gradient, and that's going to give it a linear gradient. And then I'll click on this node over here to the right, and I'll bring the opacity of that all the way up. And then I'll come up here under the HSL tab and go down to the L row and slide this to the left a little bit to make that a little darker. Then I'll click on this stop right here, and I'll take the L row and slide that to the right a little bit to make that lighter. And I'll take this and put this down here in the corner. And I'll take this one and put this up here in the top left corner so we have a little bit of a, uh, a light to dark gradient like that. And what I'm going to do now is put a star in the center there. So I'll just grab the stars and polygons tool. And up here in this toolbar, we're going to want stars selected. We want five corners, a spoke ratio of 0 0.375, and rounded and randomized, both set to zero. And with those parameters set, we could hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a star like that. And now we're just going to rotate this around so that it's sitting upright. I'll grab the uh, select tool and click on this again to get the rotation handles. And I'll just take one of these corner handles and just rotate this around until it's sitting upright. And uh, if you want to be a little precise with it, you could zoom in over the bottom portion of the star by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And you can notice where the points of the stars are sitting relative to the dotted line of the border. And you can just rotate it around until you see the bottom points of the stars are both sitting evenly on the dotted line right there, or pretty close anyway. That's close enough. I'll just leave that as it is. And I'm going to turn that white 
So I'm going to come down here to the color picker and make that white. And then I'll hold shift and click on the green square and center it up on the uh, vertical and horizontal axis and click off it to deselect everything. So what I'm going to do now is click on the star and hold control and shift and either scale it down or scale it up. Whatever it is you'll have to do, just make it fit nicely in there, something like that. And I'm going to give this a slight gradient as well to make it look like it, it matches with the, uh, the uh, square, the green square. So I'll click on the uh, linear gradient tool or the button rather. And then I'll grab the gradient tool, which is over here, and I'll click on this node right there. And I'm just going to bring the opacity of that all the way up and take this L row and slide this to the left a little bit to make this gray. And I'm just going to take this stop and put this in the lower right hand side of the star. And I'll take this stop. We're going to leave that white. I'm just going to put this right up here to the upper left like that. And I'll go back to the select tool. And what I'll do next actually is I'll put a, uh, a long shadow on there. So to do that, uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger first. That's pretty good. Uh, to create a long shadow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to pull some guides out from the sides of the pages here. But before we do that, we just want to make sure we have this button right here turned on that says snap to cusp nodes. So go ahead and turn that on and then bring the cursor up to the top of the page where you see like these little um, increments of measurement. You, you bring the cursor to the top and all the way to the right and then you click and drag out of there and it should pull a guide out like that, like a horizontal, not a hor uh, like a diagonal guide. If your cursor is more towards the center, it'll pull out a horizontal guide. So we don't want that. So make sure you have the cursor all the way to the right, pull out that guide and just snap it onto one of the corners of the stars right there. And that'll be the starting point for where the long shadow will go. I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And now I want to put another guide right here, and then right here, and then right here. So let's grab some more guides, pull that out, put that there. Grab another one, put it on this corner right there, and then another one here. And then I'll grab the Bezier pen, and I want to snap the cursor onto this guide right here to the far right. Click on that, snap to this corner, click, bring this to this next guide over right here, and then click then up to this corner here, and then down through the center of the star, and over here to this corner, and then following this guide down into the star right there, and then over to that corner, and then following the guide outside of the shape, and then back to the starting point like that. And what we could do now is we can get rid of all the guides. You can get rid of them by going to the select tool and clicking on it. Oops. Just click on it, leave your uh, mouse cursor hovered over it and press delete on the keyboard or you could just double click it and press delete that's another way or another thing you could do if you have like a bunch of guides on the page and you don't want to go and individually delete them you could just uh, temporarily toggle off the visibility of them by going to view guides and just uncheck that and then they'll all go away so what I want to do now is take this shape here that we just created this right here I want to get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking the X and fill it in with solid black by just clicking on the black color there. And then I'll lower that one step so it goes beneath the star. And then I wanna take the green rectangle, duplicate that by hitting Control D, then hold Shift and click on the black shape and go to Path, Intersection. And what I'll do now is I'll give this a linear gradient by clicking on the linear gradient button and I'll grab the gradient tool. I'll take this, this uh, stop right here and put this to the upper left then I'll take this stop and bring this to the lower right. And I'll actually, I'll hold control to lock it to go on the same angle that, the, that the, uh, the long shadow is going on. And that's pretty good right there. Let me go back to the select tool and I'll take the opacity of that. Just click off of it and click it again. I'll take the opacity of that and bring that down a little bit so that it looks something like that. And let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And that right there is our app icon design. So for that, um, we already have this square with perfect corners. It's pretty good. It's, it's good to go for Apple's iOS. We could send it to them and they'll apply the mask to it. But um, we, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we can account for where that mask is going to go on the design. So we're going to create that mask 
uh, just so we can lay it on top of there and see how it looks. And also so we can create the alternate version for the Android operating system as well because we don't want, unless you want your app icon to be perfectly square like that on the Android app, you're going to need to give it a custom shape. And uh, what I like to do is I like to just use the same shape for Android that'll be used for Apple for consistency. So uh, what we're going to do now is simulate the, um, the iOS mask. So let's grab the circles and ellipses tool. Hold control and shift and click and drag on the keyboard to create a perfectly round circle like that. And we're going to convert that to a path by going to path, object to path. And that's going to give us these four little nodes here, which we're going to need. And let me go back to the select tool. And what I want to do now is turn on the snap to smooth nodes. We're going to need that. And then I want to duplicate this circle by hitting control D. And I want to grab the circle down here by the bottom portion and just snap it to the top right up there. And I want to duplicate that again by hitting Control D and just snap this to the bottom. And I'll duplicate that again by hitting Control D. I'll snap this one to the right. Control D to duplicate. Put this one on the left. And we're going to put four more in these corners up here. So just duplicate them and snap them into those corresponding areas like that. Oops. Snap that there. And what we have now is a shape that has the rounded edges of the corner that the, uh, the Apple iOS mask will have. All we have to do now is close this up and create it into an actual solid filled uh, square. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the uh, Bezier pen and I'm gonna snap the cursor to the left of this top left circle over here and bring this line straight down until it snaps to the left of the bottom left circle and click. And then I wanna cut through the corner right there and snap to the bottom of that circle and then click and then come over here to the bottom of this one and again cut through the corner of that bottom circle and we're going to do that for the rest of these just cut through the corner like that over here to this one and then cut through the corner back to the starting point so we have a shape like that going through those circles we'll go to the select tool click and drag over all of this and go to path union and we now have the shape that the apple icon will be once the mask is applied so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and drag over this right here. Let me just move this off to the side. I'm going to create a duplicate copy of this by hitting Control D and just bring this over here because we'll need two separate copies of this. Click off of that to deselect. Then I want to click on this square right here and I want to right click that and go to copy. And then I want to take this mask right here, this little square. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D and I'm going to go to edit, paste size, paste size. And that's going to make that the same size as this app icon here. And then we can hold shift and click on that green square and center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect everything. And then click on this, uh, this, uh, this uh, new square right here and duplicate that by hitting control D. Let me zoom in on this. Then hold shift and click on the green square and go to path intersection. And then we want to click on the long shadow, which is down here. You're not going to be able to see it sticking out of the corner there since there's no color. It's actually transparent, but it is still there. So we want to make sure that it's, uh, we grab that. So we'll grab that with, with the select tool and then hold shift and click on the original black layer mask and go to object, no, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, path intersection. And then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Click and drag over all of that and group that together. And then we can click and drag over all of this and group that together. To group them together, I'm just hitting Control G or just pressing the group button up here. And we now have the two separate icons set. We can use this as the uh, the Android app icon. We could send that to the we could upload that to the Android uh, platform, and then we could use this one here for Apple. We could send this to Apple for them to use. And after they apply this mask, you're going to end up with this shape. So the only thing left for us to do is to output, uh, to export these two designs and all of the sizes required for each operating system, which I will have linked in the description. Uh, I have this app icon style guide that I created. Uh, I'll link that in the description. There's also an entire blog post I wrote last year about best practices for designing app icons. So that may be worth checking out as well. Uh, so I'll have this here. These are the sizes that you need for the Apple iOS. They're going to need copies of that design in 1024 by 1024, 180 by 180. These are in pixels, by the way, 
167 by 167 and so on. So these are all of the different sizes you're going to need to output for the Apple operating system. And then down here for Android, it's a bit different. These are all the sizes they're going to need, which is 512, 192. And you'll notice it's slightly different than Apple with some icons being the same size. So uh, what, what you usually need to do is create two separate folders, one folder for Apple, one folder for Android and export the, uh, the icons into each. So what I like to do is I'll take like the, uh, let's say, let's, we'll start with the Android icon, right? Uh, I'll turn on the lock icon up here and I'll check out what sizes we need. 512 by 512. So what I'll do is I'll go to the width right here and change that to 512 and hit enter. And there it is at 512 by 512. And I can duplicate that by hitting Control D. Move this over to the right. And see this next one, 192 by 192. So we'll just change that to 192 and hit Enter. Oops, that was an enormous mistake. 192, hit Enter. And there we have that. And then so on. You can go through and make these all, this, all of these sizes. 144 would be the next one. I'm obviously not going to go through and make all of these different sizes. Um, otherwise this video would be an hour long but you get the idea you want to go and make all of the different sizes for each different app icon uh, I'm gonna do the same thing with the Apple icons just make all the different sizes you would need like that and once you've once you're done once you've made all of the sizes there's a neat little trick for exporting all of these instead of exporting them all individually and hoping that they I mean not hoping just taking the time to export them individually and taking all of that time, what you could do is you could select on, uh, click and drag over all of them to select them all and go to File, Export PNG Image and uh, make sure you have Selection, the Selection tab selected and uh, Pixels at the DPI, you want this set to 96 if you're using the, the newest version of um, the newest version of uh, Inkscape, which is version 92. If you're using anything previous to 92, you'll want the DPA, DPI set at 90. So I'm using version 92. You can go to help about Inkscape and it'll show you which version you're using. I'm using 92. So I want to use this at 96 DPI. And I want to choose a folder to export these to. I want to export this to the desktop right here. And I'll just save this as iOS. And I'll hit save. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button that says batch export. Click on that and then go ahead and click export. And it should be exported to the desktop. I'm not completely sure though. Let me check. Okay, you know what? Uh, it turns out that the batch export function on Inkscape doesn't work the way that it's supposed to work. So if you're using a previous version of Inkscape, the batch export will send those files to where you tell it to send it to. If you're using version 92, apparently this doesn't work. So I would recommend just exporting these each individually. Just click on each one and go to export as and send it to the desktop and then just send it out individually. So, um, but otherwise that's how you can create app icons using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.